everybody, Yogi here. I hope you're doing well. I'm doing, boy, I'll tell you, it's been a weekend of highs. I shouldn't even say highs. It's been a weekend of lows and <laughs> more lows. Where do I start? Well, I guess I could start Friday with the, uh, the short I put out. Now, Thursday, we had actually start out as rain and then change to sleet and then change to snow event here in Wisconsin. And after that, the temperatures dropped, so it became icy. And Friday, we had sunshine, which was melting everything and making it even more hazardous, more slippery. I mean, this happened before, but not to the extent that it has happened, that happened Friday. I mean, during my day, I was able to take nine deliveries total. Out of those nine deliveries, seven of those could have been taken back to the store due to safety issues, i.e. the customer's um, walkway slash driveway was a sheet of ice uh, not taken care of. Now, again, I can see if it happened, just happened, the event just happened, okay? This is about 24 hours after the event ended. And people are just, for some reason, expecting, I guess, the sun to melt the, the ice right away. I don't know. It's hard for me, but I try to hold the faith of goodness, of some goodness in, in humanity still. It's so much harder today than it was 5, 10, 20 years ago. Um, everybody seems to be me, me, me. And I'm probably going to offend people on this video and... Again, these are my opinions. You're more than welcome to comment below. Be respectful. There was no, no reason whatsoever for the lack of um, compassion. And basically, it's your property. It's your property to take care of. I, I, I know everybody can just pull into their nice warm garages now and exit the garage and go into the house from the garage. But... If you're expecting somebody to deliver a big grocery item, to, a big grocery order to you, you might want to make sure that the pathway to their to your door is acceptable. Um, there were multiple times. Luckily, I did not actually fall in the short that I posted on Friday. I almost did, and I almost fell a second time on Friday. And I ended up getting into some conversations with a couple of customers. One lady comes out because I'm, I'm, sh I'm shaking. It was the last delivery I had of the day. And by this point, I'm like, it's a broken record. Every single house or a majority, 80% that I've gone to have not either salted or shoveled or both. I had one lady tell me uh, that, well, our snowblower is broken. Okay, fine. Put some rock salt down. You know, give me some traction. So, I had a customer service rating starting that day of 4.8. Five being as high as you can go on the app, on the Spark Driver app. After Friday, that dropped to 4.5 which means three customers did not like, not the fact that I didn't deliver nice to them, but that I had the audacity to call them out on the fact that it's basically a death trap trying to do my job to deliver the uh, groceries to them. This is what irritates me the most. It's like if you drive for Spark or any other driving delivery service like this, like an app, you're basically on your own. Nobody has our back. Um, I even called Spark, told them I had pictures, I had video. I told them that I, I, I had verbal confrontations with these customers because they, they the one lady started saying um, she heard me complaining, that's why she came outside. I said, well, I'm sorry, ma'am, but I don't appreciate getting to every, pretty much every single delivery I have today and having to risk falling down, breaking an arm, breaking a leg, breaking something, because you 
you can't seem to, for some reason or another, I don't know if it's laziness or you just think uh, the snow's, the sun's gonna melt everything. She said, well, just leave the groceries there then. I said, well, technically, ma'am, I could take them back to the store because your property is a safety risk to me. If I go down, I mean, it, it just seems like people are people are asking for a lawsuit. I don't, I don't know what else to, to think about that. It, you know you have a delivery coming. And again, this last delivery was a pretty big delivery. I had to make multiple trips. And, you know, I was shaking my head as I was walking over the ice gingerly so I wouldn't fall, placing the items at her door. And she comes downstairs because she's like, I think I, I think I said something to the fact that what is with people and not clearing their walkways? So this set her off. How dare I, the spark driver who's risking safety, walking on ice, trying to deliver their order, how dare I question the almighty customer? So I started the day with 4.8, ended the day with, uh, or the next day it showed up my metrics as 4.5, meaning three people gave me a strike, not because of my delivery of their groceries, but because I dared to question them on basically being a safety issue because they did not ice or salt or neither on their property. Now, if you want to go back and see that short that I'm talking about, it was from Friday, a couple days ago. I think the, the caption is, uh, do this one thing to save a life or something like that. I'm not sure exactly what I captioned it, but it was something like that. I know of two other drivers that day that fell. And again, it's just, it just seems like society now is just me, me, me. Drop my groceries off, don't complain, don't bitch, and leave. One person did uh, put on my um, comment feed from that short that I should uh, invest in a pair of spikes from or spiked shoes or spike uh, spikes to put on my shoes. This job is a is a um, a job of efficiency. It is a job of having an order, getting it done, and getting back to the store to hopefully get that next round so you can get orders every hour. What use is it going to be to me besides having to buy something due to others' negligence and laziness, like a pair of of uh, spiked cleats or shoes? Maybe I'll buy some shovels and some rock salt and start handing them out at all these uh, locations and say, "Hey, I really I, I noticed you don't want to you know take care of your property. So here I got you a shovel, I got you some rock salt. Go to town." That's never going to happen, by the way. She mentioned that I should get a pair of cleats or something. Do you know how... And, and I was a little pissy with her at first because I was... I was like, really? It's not... Now all of a sudden, I'm it's my fault. Like, I, I'm supposed to be the one who puts cleats on and uh, because other people are too lazy to take care of their properties? Are you kidding me? After calming down a little bit and coming down and just thinking things through, I'm supposed to wear a pair of... Cle of uh, spiked shoes get in and out of my car repeatedly with spiked shoes on tear up my car the inside of my car put holes into my you know my gas pedal and brake pedal and my rug on my floor or take them off every time i stop so that was fun so then saturday comes and saturday now i had some work done on my car couple weeks ago and I'd recently had an oil change and a tire rotation done Monday of last week so a week ago Monday a week ago today as I filmed this and all of a sudden I start hearing this like loud rattling noise from under the hood and it seems like it's getting faster as I accelerate and slower as I brake so at first I'm thinking, well, maybe it's uh, the serpentine belt. Maybe the serpentine belt's starting to go because it seems to speed up as I'm going fast, faster, and slow down. 
when I brake, and then when I'm idling, it's it seems to happen, but it's not getting any faster or any slower than that. So I'm thinking that it's my, sorry, I'm just trying to move the camera in the right spot. Um, so I'm trying to figure out the, what that is. So finally, it's just to the point, not only am I dealing with the customers on Friday, but the noise coming from my car under my hood sounds like, now I have a uh, Jeep Compass, that's, that's my car. I'm actually driving a loaner car today because my car is in the shop again. It's to the point now where it sounds like a, my, my, my little Jeep Compass sounds like a huge F-150 extended cab idling. Or even a, even a semi-truck idling. I mean, this thing is getting loud. So I finally go with my friend. Uh, his name is Walter. He's very knowledgeable with cars. And I ask him to if I could bring it over and have him look at it. Well... We look at it, and he does a couple, you know, tests, kind of, and he's determined that it's the engine, and I'm like, anything but the engine, because the engine we're looking at, oh my goodness, um, depending on the, the, the engine they can find, if they can find any, uh, the miles, I mean, if, if it's an engine with like 10,000 miles on it, that thing's going to cost three thousand dollars just for the engine and then you're looking at labor parts so i'm sitting there thinking oh my goodness um so now he's like it could be a couple of things but this is what i'm thinking it m might possibly be now he doesn't actually do work on cars or anything at this point anymore so i wasn't gonna ask him to like go into go into depth and like can you can you check it out even you know Di get a better diagnostic uh, diagnosis going than that. He's like, just have somebody rack it. So I take it to the place where I usually go today. Let's, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of getting out of order here. So then I hear about, you know, so I have Friday. So Saturday, I take it by my friend Walter to look at it. And he looks at the car and determines that it's probably the engine. So now I'm looking at thousands of dollars to replace the engine and my car is a, a 2016 but with the job that I have I'm driving a lot with it and it's up to about 162,000 miles right now so Sunday comes yesterday comes it's tax time we have all of our paperwork so we go up by my sister who has been on my channel before chuckles von Mecklenburg she does taxes and we're going through the taxes and going through the taxes and all of a sudden she's like oh boy and we're like what oh boy she's like you guys are paying this year okay we're paying this year so i go from hearing that my engine has to be replaced on saturday which is going to cost thousands of dollars <laughs> to uh, you owe the government this year, <laughs> which is going to cost you thousands of dollars. I'm not made of money. That is a huge hit for anybody. It, it turns out that our lovely government changed how the W-4 forms work and made it kind of even more... Uh, ridiculous and and harder to understand fast forward to today i get up bright and early i take my son to school with my my older son's car then i take my i call up the auto place and they say yeah bring it on in and I'm, they're like we'll give you a loaner we'll take a look at it we'll let you know so i'm there and i'm at this point i'm i'm really defeated i'm just defeated deflated and they see it at the at the auto place right and they're like, you know, it, it, it could be something else. It might not be the engine. And I'm just like, okay. I'm, I'm not expecting, I'm not expecting to hear good things at this point. So I go home. And I'm kind of just sitting around waiting. Get a phone call from them. The auto place. 
we got some good news for you. I'm thinking to myself, okay, good news means it must not be the engine. It wasn't the engine. But it's a good news but. <laughs> you know, so it's like, got good news for you. However, or but, this, this, and this, and this has to get fixed, and it's going to cost you $1,600. Okay. It's better than $5,000. <laughs> so, so this weekend for me, and we all have them, you know, we all have our ups and our downs. But it plateaued from Friday, just started going, and then just boom, and stayed that way throughout the weekend until today, where it finally um, seems to be going back in the right direction. So I'm not filming any sites or anything today. I just wanted to give you folks a heads up why I haven't been filming any episodes i think it's been like a, a week since i actually uploaded my last episode i've been uploading shorts to kind of keep the keep the momentum going i did upload a short and people are probably looking at it going why is this on his channel my little nephew carter blades he's a very smart kid he loves his five nights at freddy's stuff and he wants to start a youtube channel he's not he's nine years old so i'm like Here's what we'll do, Carter. We'll make a short, a one minute short of whatever you wanna do. If you wanna like show off one of your collection and talk about it or whatnot. And that's what we did. So that's what I uploaded yesterday. So if you're looking and you're like, Five Nights at Freddy's with Carter Blaze, what is this doing on his channel? I uploaded that just to, number one, see how, it would, how people would react to it. And number two, to give him a little bit of confidence booster to see how, uh, to, to maybe want to, you know, do the YouTube thing full time or start making his own YouTube videos, which more power to him. That's about all I got, folks. Um, please like, share, subscribe. Click on that notification bell. That way you will be notified when new episodes are uploaded to my channel you can always go to patreon.com www.patreon.com forward slash road trips with yogi all one word and uh <laughs> you can go on there and support uh, my site and my adventures that way so until the next one folks it's gonna be a much lighter happier we're gonna go back to road tripping i guarantee it you might get a short or two in the meantime because I have nothing else to upload. All right, folks, that's going to do it. Um, I'm Yogi. I thank you very much for watching this channel and supporting it. I really do. And until the next one, I'm going to get my car back. I'm out of here.